Louisiana Beer Review Special Edition Steel Reserve Alloy Series. Yeah, Steel Reserve, uh, they don't use 211 in this. Steel Reserve Alloy Series Spiked Watermelon 8% Alcohol 24 ounce can. Yeah, I have reviewed this, been five years, about five years since I did it. So there's the can. Can only, no draft, <laughs> no bottles, July 15th. Good, got a good date, guys. Um, water, corn syrup, dextrose. So water, corn syrup, barley malt, yeast, hop extract, sucrose, table sugar, citric acid, malic acid, sodium citrate to give it tartness, artificial flavoring, oh, no natural flavors here, people. Certified color, sodium benzoate and potassium sorbate added for freshness. All right, flavored ale, here's the official legal de designation. What is this legally? A flavored ale. Malt beverage with artificial flavor and certified colors. So do you want a beer, an ale specifically, which uses artificial flavoring and food coloring, fake coloring? Then this could be one for you. Nothing says healthy like artificial flavoring and coloring. And a lot of sugar and corn syrup. I had this in the freezer for a little while. These are the kind of things you want to blast them with cold. I'm not going to drink this very quickly, believe me. I'm going to space it out over probably a few hours. Not because of the alcohol so much. I can handle the 8%. It's the sugar sweetness is just... Ugh. Okay. Clear. Uh, watermelony. Now, they say on the website it's the flavors, flavors of watermelon and strawberry. Now, they're saying on the website watermelon, watermelon and strawberry. That's uh, Molson Core is talking to me. Now, it looks kind of orange on video, I see. But with the light shining at it, and well, actually, with the light shining through it, it's, it's the pink watermelon. But the light shining on it, it's more orange. So there you go, for your pleasure. Now, they had the 10% Tiki Series, but they dropped one of the flavors. I think the strawberry... Uh, tiki series. Now they just have the fruit punch and they've dropped the ABV to 8%. Why? I don't know. They changed the label. Basically the Tiki series was rolled into the regular series. Maybe it wasn't successful. 10%. I don't know. I really don't know the reasoning. But I know that's the case. Uh, what kind of food science is used to make artificial strawberry and watermelon flavor? Hmm. We know the food coloring. That's a common thing. You can buy that yourself at the grocery store. And you can buy artificial flavors, you know, like artificial vanilla, ex artificial vanilla flavoring, and you can buy natural vanilla extract. So you can take your pick, taste, cheers. Mm. Aroma. Yeah, like the, um, you get the fruit aromas. And also underlying cereal, really, cereal grain, corn, and barley, as you would expect. There, it does contain hops, but it is not going to be a hoppy concoction. What are these really made to be? Flavored ales for connoisseurs. Um, no, that would be more like your um, Lagunitas coffee and chocolate and vanilla and nutmeg and hazelnut flavored malt beverages or your Abita flavored malt beverages or your Founders flavored malt beverages. This is more for your convenience store. People getting home, getting off of work, passing by the convenience store, buying this, and going home and crash out, you know, and, and sip on it, I would guess. Hopefully they'll go home and drink it, not drink it on the street. You know, not drink it in the car. Drink it 
or the truck, drink it at home. The serving is five ounces, so five times four is twenty. Six times four is twenty-four, so really there it goes squealing. Um the steel brewing company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, yeah. It was bought out by Miller years ago. It was McKenzie River Company. And Steel Reserve came out in nineteen ninety four and it was bought by Miller in two thousand one. You know, Miller is owned by Molson Coors. Um, 119 calories per serving and it's five ounce serving. Things really squealing today. Um, you could cheat and go six ounces per serving and have four people drink it. And 119 cal calories, well it'll be about 130 I guess for six ounces. But anyway, yeah, I, I, I guess people might buy it and serve it according to the suggestions. Give each person, well, like I said, six times four is 24. So give each person six ounces and they sip on it and talk about the unique qualities of it, intricate qualities. Um, something tells me that's not exactly what's happening. And I don't think there's that many people buying this and pouring it into a glass to admire the appearance and give an assessment. But maybe I'm totally wrong but I'm pretty sure I'm not. No head of foam whatsoever. No lacing whatsoever. Back in the 1980s, they came out with Bartles and James and other wine coolers, wine-based. They were very inexpensive. They had advertisements on television. In uh, 1991, George H.W. Bush and his Read My Lips No New Taxes pledge uh, agreed to raise taxes, which wrecked his career, justifiably, agreed to raise taxes, and part of the tax increase was on wine. For some reason, they put tax higher tax on wine, but not malt beverages or beers. So most of these companies switched over to a malt base and they start calling them coolers instead of wine coolers or you know, whatever name they wanted, chills or sweet chill, or whatever they wanted to call them. And um, they didn't make a big announcement about it. And so most of these you can still find, with some difficulty, a wine-based cooler. But uh, most of these are um, malt-based these days for that, for that tax reason. In some states, they're liquor-based. But not too many states, because some states, most states, not Louisiana, but many states, I know Georgia for one, they don't allow any kind of liquor-based product sales in, in convenience stores. You say, well, I mean, what difference does it make if it all is 8%? What would be the point? I mean, I guess there is no point. It's just like a lot of these regulations, have, they don't make any sense. But uh, so, Molson Coors... Originally Miller, S.A.B. Miller, they decided to put out a big line of flavored malt beverages. For people who want, let's be honest, alcoholic fruit punch, alcoholic soda pop. And obviously not for the connoisseurs, I was kidding about that. They've been wildly successful, as evidenced by the fact that they're in every convenience store. And you always find fresh cans. You don't really find out-of-date cans. So, uh, uh, not every line has been successful. Colt 45 Blast did not make it. That bombed out. Don't know why. I didn't. Well, of course, they don't promote anything. And I never had it. You know, by the time I decided to try it, it was gone. Um, Four Locos. Still going strong, but maybe if people wise up to them going over to this artificial flavoring, artificial sweetener, that might kill it. Uh, I'm not dealing with it with artificial. Um, you got the Rita's still doing well, but they've cut way down on their offerings. They just have like about four flavors today instead of like they were getting up to like 10, 15 flavors and flooding their own market. Um, probably costing them too much. <clears throat> the Natty Rush is gone. That was their 
early line of those natural Natty Daddy flavor, Natty Rush, but that's gone. You still might find Natty Daddy lemonade or watermelon, but I think those were pulled. Um, of course, there's other lower ABV ones. Well, they still have some strong ones. Smirnoff Ice Smash, where they smash two flavors together. They have the um, Seagram's Escaped Spiked, the 8 Percenters. Those do well uh, around here. Um, MXD never caught on. That was the 12 Percenters, I think, from the people that made Cayman Jack. And Cayman Jack... Uh, where well that comes in at 5.8. That's a milder product. Does very well. Mike's Hard does very well at 5. The regular Seagram's was very low at 3.2. Does well. Um, Smirnoff Ice at 5. Up to 5.4, 5.6 does well. And like I said, the uh, Smirnoff Ice Spiked does quite well. So they're out there. I mean, it's, and I'm missing some, obviously. There's more. It seems like now it's hard for them people to break into the market. They, you got your main ones, the Rita's, formerly Bud Light, Lime or Rita. They had to, they had to take that name off because nothing light about it. Got the Rita's, the Alloy Series. Oh, and don't forget Club Tales, the original Club Tales, flavored ales from Canada, 10%. Watch out for those. Um, there's the Jack Daniels Country Cooler Country uh, thing. Um, they're low ABV. They seem to do well. Yeah, so I mean, you see what I'm saying? But there's those, and then other ones come and go, and they don't seem to have a lot of success breaking into the market because people just get their favorite, they stick with it. So could this be a favorite of mine? Well, yeah, theoretically, if I actually drank these things besides doing reviews, which I never do, I never go to a convenience store and say, I'd like to try one of those. I mean, I want to have one today. No. I'll get beer. Coors Banquet or Paps Blue Ribbon or something like that. That's true. Rolling Rock even. But these things are... I'll tell you what, you get a lot of tap water underneath. There's tap water underneath. Um, there's no hiding that. I don't know why that leaches out. But that tap water is there. I'll put my hat off. I'll take my hat off because... It blocks all the light, you know? It's like I'm in the shadows. Um, and I don't want to be disrespectful to the beer. Um, I like the color scheme, the the, 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 the green and the uh, pink for like a watermelon, the, 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 the outside and the inside. It's a sharp label. The new labels are better than the old. The old ones were nice. But... Um, uh, I don't know. I, I should check out the readers and see if they got the tap water evidence. I don't recall that really so much. You get in the barley malt and corn. You know, so you get in the beer base and you get in that tap water. On the top side, the flavors are the so-called watermelon and the so-called strawberry. Artificial. I mean, it does taste like it though, so... Kudos to the food scientist for making it taste like something that it isn't. Overall, though, I probably give it a lot higher score. I probably give it a lot higher score five years ago. But I mean, it's for a flavor malt beverage, or in this case, a flavored ale, to be more specific. It's. I think the problem is that so much competition has come in that maybe is better. You know, like. The Smirnoff Ice Smash and that came in Jack, you know. Uh, then there's the whole iced tea line, which is a type of variant of these. Um, I'm going to go at 83. It's good. It's probably much lower than my previous one, but I'm just, I always call it as I see it when I'm looking at it. I don't worry about people saying, well, you know, in 2019, you said, I know, well, that was then, this is now. <laughs> we can make a movie about that called That Was Then, This Is Now. Anyway, uh, so laissez les bon temps relais, uh, uh, 83 out of 100. It's good if you want to do this to yourself, <laughs> you know. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all go to um, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and 
take a brewery tour watching them make this stuff, but it probably is 2 in the morning. They probably don't sh showcase this kind of stuff on the tour, but they might.